Drive the prawn trawler, the Annaline, out of Oluca. And um, there's been a white spot affecting prawns out through Queensland. We're real worried about it down here because we don't want to lose our industry. The white spot disease has been a big issue for us because uh, um, consumers aren't buying um, prawns or raw prawns because they think that there's something wrong with them that they're going to get sick from them. Um, the biggest issue is that uh, there is not much information out there to the primary producers to be able to tell the public what's going on. There's no uh, campaign to inform the general public about what's going on. Is it safe for trawlers that unload here to go into Southport, which is in the zone, refuel with frozen product on board and then steam out and steam back into um, New South Wales? The boundary at Tweed Heads, whether we can still bring live spanner crabs in and the Tweed out of the Tweed River. My vessel is moored in Tweed Heads in the river, so that's not in the zone. If I needed to go into Southport Seaway, whether I need to be within that decontamination uh, order. Yeah, do I have to clean it or do I have to wash it down or is there a, a sterilising process I can go for my deck box to make sure that it's safe because it's had green prawn in there? We, chlor we chlorinate and wash it every time anyway, but is that good enough? Our uh, vessel has been in the zone fishing, it goes to another zone, it's got to be uh, fully scrubbed down and that. For example, Morton Bay boats, if they fish in Morton Bay, they can't go to the deep water when the prawns are on unless they're fully uh, slipped and um, washed down and stuff like that. That's that's just outrageous costs for the fishermen, which will send us under of cleaning the vessel and then we put it back into the same water and then steam out of the zone. I don't understand that. Like commercial fishermen's got to sterilise their boat and their equipment to go to another fishing area or ground when they're finished. What about the amateur who just pulls his boat out of the water and goes fishing somewhere else? We've got real concerns about this white spot and how it might spread and how it might hurt our industry. How did this white spot ever get into the country in the first place when we all knew it was going to come if they didn't do the right thing? And I want to know who's responsible and what you're going to do to them. Yeah, if there's another sort of movement order south of the border, it would uh, impact me fairly heavily. So it really put me out of business. So um, I'm trying to avoid that if possible. I just want to know. Who held, who's held accountable for it? That's what I need to know. It, it, that's one of the things, if it does get into our industry and, and stop our livelihoods, who's, who's, who, who sorts it all out, you know? Where, where's, where's the problem? Where's it end? And who fixes it, you know? So we've all got to live, and it's an industry that keeps the our little area, you know, in, employed, basically. I have two ocean prawn trawl in, in New South Wales, two ocean prawn trawl boats. Also, have a, an export license to export um, to like out of the EU. And um, I don't. We've got such stringent controls on quality and and, and uh, product testing and so forth. And yet, they biosecurity can let this happen. Someone should be accountable for this because it could wipe out a whole industry, which is worth a lot of lot of coin, as they say. I'd like to know who's actually responsible for the, the frig up from the word go, you know, like who, who let it happen. And if there is a loophole, get it shut quick so we can stop this from happening again, if it can be controlled, if it can be controlled. The price, prawns could drop in price because you can't move prawns around, around the country and also export. And also, it's going to have a long term effect on, our, on my business. And I think someone in the government, the government should be held accountable for that. If it does do that, the fishermen should be compensated. This could ruin uh, people on the bones of their own backside, you know. My name's Gary Collis. I work in the ocean prawn trawl industry out of Iluka. Um, the Ocean Watch information about the white spot has been very forward, very helpful. Um, the thing is that concerns me the most is if it comes here, um, 
who are we going to come and see when we're closed for three months? The co-op's going to be closed for three months, the workers going to be out, my crew all going to be out of employment for three months. Who am I going to come and see? Uh, I'm certainly going to be looking for somebody to compensate me. That's my biggest concern. If it comes down here, what's going to happen? The father's got to go home and say, I've got no money this week, I can't pay the bills. I'm going to lose my house, I'm going to lose my boat, probably lose his family, you know, because, you know, that's the drastic side of things, I understand that, but my drastic side of things happen when the government does stupid things because we've got trade agreements with certain countries. That's, you know, it's about all I need to say, I suppose. Aquis was, has caused a big drama by just not um, testing the prawns properly to come into the country in the first place. If that was done properly in the first place, none of this would have ever eventuated anyway. I'd also like to know what our rights are when we've got a, a large quota given to us, or any quota, um, as far as being able to sue if it does come down here. There's plenty of questions that need to be answered, you know, but I'm not sure how far it's going to come this way or that way or how wide, you know, like our inshore prawn trawl is pretty important to all of us. What do we do? Just sit back and wait and does it become, does it get a stranglehold on everything quick or how quick can it spread or how, how do you stop it once it's in the ocean? You know, say if you peel it and you have a green prawn peeled, is it still in? It's still in. It's still on the prawn, it's not part of the shell or? You know, I believe there is a problem with labelling and they have written on them that they're for human consumption. Now as far as I'm concerned that to me means that they're the safest to put in the water. Obviously with the total or six month ban on imported product into Australia from countries known with the disease whether or not it's a total ban or whether stuff can still be imported to Australia from places like New Caledonia that are known not to have white spot at the present. I'd like to know where the movement control is on imported uh, forms that are already in Australia. Hey Boyle, I own the skipjack in the ocean trawl fishery. Um, it's great ocean watching PFA's chasing his white spot up. One of my main concerns is the product that was already here is still being sold whereas it should have been taken straight off the shelves immediately. So there's still chances of this being spread around and yeah, we've got to put an end to it. So. My name's Mark Espert. I'm a um, line fisherman in Coffs Harbour. I've got a boat called the Chloe Dean. Now, I just want to know, is there a potential risk of this white spot getting into scaly fin fish? Hi, my name is Mark Dean East from Mud Crab Market for Short. We're here on the Clarence River Zone too. I'm a mud crab fisherman, uh, mullet fisherman as well, spring fisherman. Ocean Beach, and I just need to be up to date with what's going on with this white spot. I'd like to thank Ocean Watch for coming here, keep us up to date. We'd also like to be kept up to date from the New South Wales fisheries and just in general what's going on with my fishery.